Hello everyone, my name is Christopher, and if you are new here and you like planning, lifestyle, vlogs, organization, home DIYs, cooking, cleaning, basically, if you like anything at all, you are going to find something to connect to on this channel. So thank you for wanting to spend your time with me, and thank you for being a part of this. If you like those things, make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. Also, follow me over on Instagram. It's a great way for us to connect. I love chatting with all of you over there. I film two videos a week. What you can expect is on the weekends is a vlog, and we typically do some home stuff, all cooking, cleaning, organizing, planning, chatting, just like catching up with a friend. And then on Wednesday, I designate that video for one singular topic. And that could be something from a plan with me, it could be a recipe, it could be a morning routine. It really is just one topic within the lifestyle realm that I find really interesting and wanna share with you. This week's is a DIY. I don't know about all of you, but this year, because we're home more often, I feel really driven to decorate for Valentine's Day. It's not a typical holiday that I do a lot of decorating for. However, my home is really neutral, and I also want to maintain the integrity and the investment in having this neutral decor that's important to me aesthetically. So I want to do a couple DIYs. Some are going to show up in a Wednesday video, some of them are gonna show up in a vlog, but we are going to do the one today that feels the most transitional. We're going to make it in a garland form, but you could easily convert this to a wreath using a wreath form or even shaping a coat hanger and wrapping the paper that we're going to be working with around it and gluing onto it. Literally, there are minimal supplies, but you could easily get your kids involved to help cutting out the shapes. You could really use this technique throughout the season for birthday parties. You can really tailor make it to fit whatever you want it to. And that's how you know it's a good DIY. It is not just for Valentine's Day, even though that's what we're going to do. And you have the flexibility to make this work in your life, no matter what season or what holiday you're using it for. So let's go ahead and jump in. I got all of my stuff on Amazon, but you could easily go and instead of buying a whole pack, easily just buy a few sheets that you need. I would say that I use between eight and 10 sheets of each one, and I cut probably 12 to 15 hearts out on each one, and I still have some left over, so just know that. But the colors that I bought, it's really hard to tell a difference, but in person, there is a subtle difference. This is white, this is silk white, this is warm white, where you can really tell the difference. This is moss green. You'll also need a hot glue gun, scissors, and if you would want to, which I'll show you at the end how I'm using it, a little bit of ribbon to just finish it off and add a little bit more texture and detail. And then lastly, the most important thing that you'll need is a roll of brown paper. Once again, got this for I think $10 on Amazon. This is what you're going to use to actually make the cording for your garland. So we are going to twist this thing up and use it as our base and layer everything on top of it. These are all the materials you need. You could choose any color. You could go bold if you want it, but it allows you to tailor make it to fit your decor, which I think is the most exciting thing, specifically with Valentine's decor, which is hard to find neutral pieces to use. All right, friends. So the first thing we have to do is build the base for our garland. And I'm going to actually use this brown craft paper. So I'm going to get it the length that I need, and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. Once you have the length you need, all you're going to do next is kind of create a vine or a rope by twisting. Now that I have my garland completely twisted up, I'm working with a couple different colored hearts. So I have silk white, I have regular white, which there isn't much of a difference between the silk white and the regular white. I also have what's called warm white. And then lastly, I have all my leaf shapes in moss green. Now, the thing with this is you actually want that fold facing up. It'll help add a lot of texture into your wreath. You're going to just add glue to your end of your heart. Make sure you leave space to attach. And you're going to just start layering in with all different sizes. You're just going to go through 
tucking in heart after heart, mixing the colors as you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of work my way one side and then the other. So I put one this side, so I'm gonna alternate and go this way. And to give you a sense of what that's looking like, it's going to be beautiful when it's done. And that's all you're going to do. You're going to continue to work your way, layering as you go. And this is literally it. I'm just going to keep working my way down this garland, attaching the hearts to it. And then when you get to the end, I would say my recommendation would be to attach hearts first and then go in and add your leaves. So you can see I have layered in all my hearts and now all I'm going to go in and I'm not gonna glue these in right away. I'm gonna show you how I kind of think about it. I'm just going to go in and think of spots where I wanna break up the white with green leaves. So I want them sticking out at all different spots. And I like to get them all placed first. This is definitely the time to be like super generous because this is what will really fill all this out. I also wanna make sure that I get some facing up. So like you see how you just see the profile of that one? And then Really close it out at the top, maybe with one behind there. So now you can really see how that's taking shape. All right, I'm gonna just now go in and glue these in place. All right, friends, so here is the finished product, but I'm going to finally get this all styled, show you how I'm hanging it, where I'm using it in my house, but it is so pretty. It is so pretty. I cannot wait to show you this all styled and ready for Valentine's Day. I thought I would show you all the finished styling in my entryway. So all I ended up doing with the ends that I had on those twists was put some push pins in each and then I just tied a simple little velvet bow with some ribbon I had, but I love how this has turned out. He loves how this has turned out, but I just think for such a reasonable, easy project, it adds such a layer. I also want to say that you could easily do this on a wreath form and make it into a wreath. You can make it as long as you want. You really have so much flexibility. And like I said, for every season, you could do egg shapes. You should could do four leaf clovers. You could do stars in red, white, and blue. Like you could really make this work. You just, you really want to be a part of this, don't you? You really want to be a part. You just want to make sure that whatever shape you end up using, there is a center fold in it. That really does help give it the texture and the dimension you need so that it doesn't fall flat. But I must say that I am thrilled with how this turned out and I'm excited to implement it in other ways, which will probably happen in a weekend vlog. My friends, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you learned a new technique. I wasn't sure if this was going to work and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope that you'll click subscribe. I hope that you'll join this family and be a part of it as we venture through 2021 all together, learning new things along the way. With that, I'm going to end this video like I end all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone. Until next time, which will be very soon. Bye-bye.